Hi, I'm Novus Bivak, CEO of Twine.com, and today I'm going to give you a preview of some of the new technologies we're working on for Twine version 2, which will launch towards the end of the year. Twine is a service that helps you track your interests, and it's powered by the semantic web. In version 2, we'll be launching a new way to search and navigate the web that's more precise than keyword search. Effectively, we can treat the entire web like one big database. Let me show you what I mean. Suppose you're looking for Thai food recipes. We'll type Thai food. You get back about 6 million results, and that's typical of a keyword search engine. But if you look at the top, you can see something different is happening. We recognize within these results different kinds of things. Recipes, restaurants, and even a product. Let's look at the recipes. Now we've jumped down to 282 things that actually are recipes. So these aren't just pages that have the word recipe or the word Thai food. These are Thai food recipes. These are specific kinds of things. Twine 2.0 is building a giant semantic index of things. Things of various types all around the web. So let's look a little more deeply now. Let's drill in. Over here on the right you can see we give you database like filtering capabilities. So let's look at vegetarian recipes that have a main ingredient of ginger and that we're in Bon Appetit. So now we're down to six results from six million with just a few clicks. Let's go out and look at one of these. Now we're looking at this particular item which we indexed and it's on Epicurious. It was published in Bon Appetit and as you can see um, it has a main ingredient of minced peeled fresh ginger. So let's go back and look at some other examples. This doesn't just work for recipes, it works for all kinds of things. So let's keep with the food vertical here. We'll type Japanese, see what we find. Well, Twine sees that there are various things related to this term Japanese. It sees recipes, restaurants, even some dog breeds. Well, let's look at restaurants. When we go into restaurants, we see 288 restaurants related to Japanese. And let's look in California. Now, the index isn't finished yet. We're still building it out. So this is just to show you what we're doing. It'll be much larger when we launch it. Let's look for restaurants with their own parking lot that serve wine and beer and uh, that uh, are moderately priced. And so we've jumped down again to a small number of results very quickly, just a few clicks. Now let's try a very different topic area, such as sports. Let's type in baseball. So now, of course, we see a large number of results for baseball. And within that, we just want to look at baseball players. Now we're looking at all 1,100 active players in Major League Baseball. And perhaps we just want to see players who play for the Yankees and who are right-handed quickly jumps down to 31 results, one of which is Alex Rodriguez. Let's go click on that. and You can now see this is what we indexed. It's a page out on ESPN which describes this player and his various attributes. And you'll see this is not just plain old text. This is pretty structured complex data. So Twine is able to actually look at this, figure out this is a baseball player, he plays for the Yankees, he's right-handed, and so on. Then it puts it into this one big index and makes it searchable, just like a database. Now one of the other things this will do is it lets you follow your interests. And that's one of the things you can already do in Twine version 1. When you find something you like, you can follow it, and then it will send you updates by email, or into Facebook, or even to uh, RSS or other services you use to track your interests. The most important thing to note is that this is a web scale system. So what we're doing is semantic extraction on the entire web. It doesn't require pages to already have semantic web metadata or RDF or anything like that in their pages. That's not necessary. Instead, we go out, we analyze the pages, and we generate this semantic metadata ourselves. And that's because we really have figured out that most people are just not going to learn RDF. It's too complicated. We've got to do it for them. Of course, that data is available to those who want it. And if you have RDF or any kind of microformats or metadata, we can see that and make use of it. But the key is you don't have to. We can index your data and turn it into the semantic web automatically for you. We're going to be opening an API, providing a bunch of developer tools, and making this linked data that other people can use. Our business model is to partner. So we're working with dozens of big publishers to provide this capability in their sites, on their data, or for their categories of interest. So for example, a bunch of food sites might team up with us to work to build a new kind of vertical search for food powered by our system and hosted by us using our API in their own sites. Same with shopping search, music search, people search, and many other kinds of search that look at structured data. This is a system that's much more precise than keyword search engines like Google and Bing, and is ideally suited to the kind of structured data we're seeing all over the web today. The system will be powered by RDF OWL and a number of other technologies which are all open standards and it will be monetized with advertising. This is just a preview and I hope this has been interesting. Let me know if you have further questions. In my next screencast I'll look at the developer tools.